Shohei Otani has been a sight to see at Dodger Stadium ever since he signed. We got another look at him yesterday working out. Will that go uh, into the Dodgers thinking and, and how the team can get better? We'll also get into a potential idea of how to get rid of or trade Manuel Margot and get a little bit back for him. And we'll take a look at a question from a listener about past free agents that the Dodgers didn't land. That's what's on tap. So let's get locked on Dodgers. You are Locked On Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yo, 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 Dodger fans, welcome to Locked On Dodgers. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, the number one local sports daily podcast network. Locked On, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. This is the daily podcast covering the Los Angeles Dodgers, bringing you the smart fans perspective on our boys in blue. You can find us where we find podcasts and on YouTube, simply by searching for Locked on Dodgers. And if you want to become an everyday or the easiest way to do so is to listen and watch every day. And you can make that even easier by subscribing uh, wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. In order to be notified when our episodes are ready, if this is your first time listening watching, welcome. My name is Vince Samperio, joined by my co-host, Jeff Snyder. We're both lifelong Dodger fans that do a daily podcast about the Dodgers. We've been doing it for almost four or five years now. Yeah, for five years. It's pretty crazy. Uh, as Locked On Dodgers, a little bit longer as a podcast duo together. We have covered the team in a variety of ways. We're not quite insiders, though. We're just here to bring you some smart and uh, hopefully knowledgeable and rational takes about the Dodgers so we can all be better Dodger fans together. That's what we're here to do today. There was no real news on the Dodgers front. There was some news in the baseball world. The Mariners made a trade for Jorge Polanco from the Twins. But other than that, another quiet day on the front. Uh, Cody Bellinger and Blake Snow and all those guys are still out there, so... We creep forward uh, with them not having any jobs. But there is somebody that did sign earlier this offseason, that's Shohei Otani. And we've seen him in a variety of ways at Dodger Stadium, a lot working out this offseason, whether it's with other players on their socials, whether it's on his socials, whether it's on the Dodgers socials. And uh, the Dodgers shared some of those photos and videos of Otani on, during yesterday. And, uh, yeah, Jeff, it's one of those where we, we've never really – the Dodgers have kind of the social media side has definitely made it a point to kind of show the players being there. Last week we had a picture of Bob Miller and Walker Bueller when they're working out. We've seen Gavin Lux working out and that's always kind of happened, but it's always been more under the radar now with Otani and everybody else. It's kind of out there a little bit more, but as somebody that just signed a deal for 700 mil or 460 mil, depending on how you feel about it, him being out there every day is uh, pretty, pretty cool to see. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that it took this long for the Dodgers to really post many photos of him working out because from what I hear, it's been a pretty much a constant thing every day since he signed. Uh, there were even during the holidays when everybody was on vacation, everything was kind of shut down. There was still somebody assigned to be at the stadium to let Shohei Otani in to, to, so that he could do his workouts. And uh, I mean, he is just... He, he's been just relentless and obviously coming off of surgery, coming off of uh, season ending, you know, a, a handful of injuries. It wasn't just the arm surgery. I think there was an, was it an oblique issue that he had at the end of last year. Um, and so obviously he wants to come in as healthy as possible this season, you know, with the new team. I mean, everybody looks good in Dodger blue. We make that point a lot. Uh, seeing him in the, the home white uniform when, uh, at the press conference when he signed was, you know, awesome. Even if the, the uniforms, the jerseys themselves look a little bit different this year, maybe not quite as nice as they've been in the past, but uh, seeing him in the actual blue, the workout gear, like something about that blue, uh, it just looks so good. And he looks like he is um, still in ridiculously good shape. And, and it's not really a surprise. Otani has always been in ridiculously good shape, but I mean, he looks like, He's in midseason form, and you know I'm sure the the surgery and the injuries did slow him down some, but you wouldn't know it to look at him. The cliche right now is best shape of his life, Jeff. Yeah, uh, I don't know, but 
Shohei is just like consistently always in the best shape of his life. So, you know, his life is the best shape of his life. Yeah, but it's one of those things where, you know, I've seen some comments and stuff about, you know, kind of asking where the other Dodgers are, whatever. Everybody works out differently in the offseason. You know, let's get that noted. I don't think that anybody else on the Dodger team that we haven't seen at Dodger Stadium is not working out and getting ready for the season. But I do think for, you know, your best player, one of your best players to be out there every day, obviously shows the younger guy some, you know, shows everybody. And Otani is, is something that's been mentioned before, too, of, you know, a different type of hunger. Otani wants to make the postseason, one, wants to do well in the postseason, two, because he's, he hasn't been able to do it yet so far in the big leagues. So I do think, you know, there might be some benefit there for the Dodgers overall to have somebody – with a different type of hunger to maybe treat the regular season a little bit differently than maybe the Dodgers have treated it in the last few years. And not not in the fact of being successful, but just in the way they attack each and every day. And, you know, not not to say they, that anyone takes it for granted, but, you know, even the Dodger players in the past I've mentioned, kind of the regular season is a little bit different when you've been on the Dodgers for years. I know Max Muncy brought it up and, you know, other guys have talked about it before. So, to see and to have this, you know, just adds to that. Uh, I am curious to kind of see once we see more during spring. I really want to see Yamamoto and his, you know, workouts. And if anyone starts adopting that and, and seeing how they kind of work together and everything else with it. But yeah, for Otani, I mean, we know we knew about him being really good and we've seen his stuff a little bit with the Angels, but mostly in season. I don't think we've ever really seen Otani in the offseason. Uh, and especially not as much as we've seen to this point. Yeah. And, you know, not all the players live near Dodger Stadium in the offseason. And so wherever they're putting in the work, there's there's no doubt that the vast majority of the players are putting in the work. Uh, it's just not quite as visible. And, you know, like like you said, Bobby Miller and and uh, Walker Bueller and Gavin Lux and, and a handful of others were there with, with photographers last week. We don't know what's going on when there aren't pictures being taken, but uh, – yeah, it's kind of interesting you talk about the the regular season because, like last year, that was the the talk all regular season was that the additions of Jason Hayward and Miguel Rojas kind of had them appreciating the regular season more, taking it more seriously, all that stuff, and then they got swept in the NLDS. So, you know, who knows if that matters at all? Um, I did think it was interesting uh, in the pictures of Otani. We saw some. I think we saw the first leaks of the spring training hats for this year. Uh, over the weekend, and they are going away from that weird semi mesh hat that that leaves guys with leaves bald guys with weird pattern sunburns on their heads for spring training. They're going back to an actual baseball cap. Uh, but I noticed that Shohei appears to be wearing last year's spring training hat uh, or workout hat or whatever you want to call it that does have that mesh. I also know he's wearing uh, New Balance cleats, so I uh, I get maybe that's a uh, uh, he's a New Balance athlete. Yeah, but I, I think it's specifically he. That's his message to Clayton Kershaw, saying, "Come home, Clayton. You know, let's be dads together." I don't think Otani's a dad. He's just uh, got the dad shoes. Well, I think there's more dads than Skechers. Uh, oh, is that what? <laughs> yeah, yeah Kershaw Skechers. Yeah, uh, it's uh, you know, dad, dad shoes are awesome. Uh, yeah, the, I. Uh, I like the New Balance. It's, uh, you know, obviously Otani's got those New Balance commercials uh, and just kind of may, maybe that's why the pictures were going on. Maybe he said, you know what? Uh, New Balance said that we need to get some some more pictures and and Nike <laughs> needs to get the Nike shorts and the Nike shirt. Uh, uh, we need to get some of this advertising money rolling in. So uh, let's get some pictures out there on social media. And he needs to start cutting out the logos like Kershaw used to do when he was an Under Armour, <laughs> Under Armour guy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, New Balance, our dad, she's my dad, likes New Balances too. So uh, the other thing we saw from Otani real quick over the weekend was him accepting his MVP award at the at the Baseball Writers uh, Dinner Awards ceremony. And he did an entire speech in English, which is interesting. Everything that happens with Otani or that's happened with Otani since he signed with the Dodgers, I, it feels like it's all for a reason. Otani at the Lake or not Lake because Otani was at the Rams game. Otani has been, you know, out with Yamamoto eating. He, you know, spoke in English. I don't know if it does, uh, but it definitely feels like, or at least on his side, he's marketing himself differently now that he's a Dodger. 
Yeah, it, it could be. And obviously, it's a lot easier to give a prepared speech in English. I mean, even Yamamoto, his press conference did read a paragraph in English uh, answering questions. And like we talked about, you know, it's totally understandable and probably a good thing that guys who English isn't their first language, that they use an interpreter when they're doing a question answer until they are, you know, completely a thousand percent comfortable doing it. And some guys never get there even during long careers and that's okay. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was pretty awesome that he did, you know, give his speech in English. Uh, and you know, we've, uh, it, it will be interesting to see as he, like you said, he's got the new balance deal. He's got a couple other U S sponsorships. I assume he has a lot of, uh, sponsorships in Japan going on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it is all part of the evolution of Shohei Otani, the, the brand that we're probably seeing, uh, live and in person right now. Yeah, it's been fun to watch. So we'll continue to look out for Otani. And now we look forward at an idea from a listener about the Dodgers and making a deal and how they can clear up a spot specifically for Kike Hernandez. That's what's on top. So make sure you keep it locked on Dodgers. This episode is brought to you by Factor. Get started on your year uh you know january they call the trial month february is the real where the real things get started and factors here to help you with ready to eat meal delivery that takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the now new year with over 35 meals to choose from per week with keto calorie smart vegan veggie and other options plus 55 weekly add-ons you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your year. And if you need a special occasion meal, they have Gourmet Plus, which is the perfect solution. If you're looking for fast upscale options done easily. And it's for those that have a more hectic life, whether whatever is keeping you busy, Factor is flexible because they can change up your order every week with plans from four to 18 meals a week, whatever you're gonna need, or you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. No more need to stress. You can get it all with Factor. So head to factormeals.com slash locked on MLB and use code locked on MLB 50 to get 50% off. That's code locked on MLB 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on MLB 50. Go get your 50% off. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen of the day. Make sure to become an everyday by listening or watching every day. We're here for you every Monday through Friday for about 30 minutes. And if you need more of your day, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, you can go on YouTube and search for Locked On Sports Today or Locked On Sports Los Angeles. They are two 24-7 streaming channels that are covering the news and stories from around the sports world and around the LA sports world. You don't want to miss out. It's on all day, so you really can't miss out if you go check it out. So go to YouTube and subscribe to each of those. And Jeff, we had a proposal slash idea from a listener uh, coming off the heels of us talking about Kiki Hernandez on yesterday's episode and basically us kind of saying Manuel Margot would seem to be the odd man out if they did want to go that route. Uh, well, we had a proposal idea that could help that and be beneficial to the Dodgers in a couple of ways. Yeah, it comes from our buddy Gavin Deluhosh. And I believe for the first time ever, I did just pronounce his last name correctly. Uh, if not, he will let me know. But I think I got it. Uh, but he is wondering about the possibility of a trade of Manuel Margot and Hunter Fiducia for prospects, uh, which would then obviously open up a roster spot for Kike Hernandez. It would also open up another 40-man roster spot because Fiducia is currently on the 40-man roster. Uh, and he says... It would open the door to sign Kike Hernandez and open a path for Dalton Russian to get more appearances. Maybe a rebuilding team needs an MLB ready catcher and a veteran outfielder to mentor younger players. And uh, yeah, you know, like we we were talking about yesterday, that if the Dodgers did sign Kike, that would mean that they did have to get rid of, of Manuel Margot one way or another, and a trade would be the most likely. We've also talked. Uh, a few times this offseason about the fact that the Dodgers currently have four catchers on their 40 man roster. And that is probably too many. Uh, of course, you know, trading fiducia with the idea of getting Dalton rushing, Dalton rushing some major league time is just replacing one catcher with another on the 40 man roster at some point. Uh, but to start the season, uh, you know, it, it might make sense. And, and obviously Diego Cartaya, his trade value is down because of his down year. 
if the Dodgers feel like he's going to have a bounce back year, it wouldn't make sense to trade him right now at his lowest value. Uh, Austin Barnes probably doesn't have a lot of trade value. Uh, and you know, and so if they were going to trade one of the four catchers on the 40 man roster, obviously Will Smith isn't going anywhere. So yeah, Fiducia would make sense. His value is probably at its high point, uh, because he did do really well in the minor leagues last year and, and hasn't, hasn't played in the big leagues yet. So hasn't had any big league failure or anything. Uh, and, and so, you know, I, I don't hate the idea. I obviously in a perfect world, uh, I think Fiducia would just be in the big leagues as the backup catcher, uh, instead of Austin Barnes, but there are a lot of reasons, you know, some baseball reasons and some non-baseball reasons to keep Austin Barnes around. Uh, but I don't know. What do you think about that idea of Margot and Fiducia going in a trade? I mean, a face value, it makes a lot of sense for the Dodgers in the sense of clearing the roster spots and, you know, ha has to be said that the Dodgers wouldn't necessarily be getting any prospects of current significant value. You know, Hunter Fiducia is not a top 100 prospect or probably even a top 200 prospect or anything like that. And well, Margot, while he is a starting caliber outfielder, he's not anything more than a, you know, probably league average or slightly above league average on a good day uh, outfielder. So you're not, you know, you're looking for, Flyers, young guys, whatever, basically people that aren't going to need the 40-man roster spot anytime soon if you do go that way. So, you know, it, it it's a smart idea if the Dodgers decide to go a route where they want to add, whether it's Kike or any other uh, position player that would fill out the roster, it, it would make some sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you wouldn't need rushing on the 40-man until you actually needed him if you were going to bring him up to the majors. So, you know, you save yourself one spot there, although the Dodgers are going to pick up quite a few spots on that 40 man once they're in camp and once the 60 day IL opens up. But uh, yeah, it, it, it makes sense. It's a, you know, smart, different idea that we hadn't really seen or heard or thought of, but also when we haven't need to really think of yet, because it does, you know, as far as we've seen the, the interest is more on Kike's side than anybody else's side right now in the sense, or at least that's what's been reported. Yeah, and when it comes to Dalton rushing, it's it's kind of interesting because, like, and we kind of touched on this yesterday, if Will Smith were to get hurt, I think Dalton rushing is the answer probably to fill in for him. If Austin Barnes were to get hurt, uh, I don't necessarily know that Dalton rushing is the answer because Dalton rushing needs to be playing every day. Uh, that's the, the best thing for his development. And playing every day in the big leagues as a replacement for Will Smith would would be a challenge for him, but it would it would continue his development. I don't think being a big league backup, and like we saw last year when Austin Barnes got hurt, the Dodgers signed Austin Wins and then DFA'd him when they didn't need him anymore. And whatever whatever other year it was, it was Travis Darno who filled that role. Uh, you know, there's there's been uh, I there's probably somebody else that I'm forgetting. I feel like there's another catcher like that who the Dodgers have brought in and just say, okay, you're going to be our backup catcher until our actually back actual backup catcher is feeling better. Uh, and, and then you're going to be gone. And uh, Tony Walters, but he was Tony with Walters. OKC and then came out. Yeah. But same thing. He wasn't on the 40 man roster. And then they said, okay. And so, you know, if Barnes were to get hurt, somebody's going to leapfrog rushing, whether it is somebody, I don't even know who they have uh, at triple a as their catchers this year. Cause I, I think Tony Walters took a coaching job somewhere. Uh, I think that's what I heard. So, you know, but guys like that, where they're, they're going to have a couple catchers in triple a who are former big leaguers and probably not future big leaguers, unless a guy like Austin Martin's got gets hurt. And so, you know, I, I guess my point there with Gavin's idea is I don't know that fiducia is necessarily standing in, in rushing's way at all, because right now, as it stands, if Barnes got hurt, Fiducia would replace him. If Smith got hurt, rushing would probably replace him. And uh, at, at least if it was far enough into the season that rushing has, you know, had a chance to hit well in AAA this year, um, all, all those things. So I, I don't know that it's necessarily necessarily necessary to trade Fiducia to make room for rushing. But uh, again, having those four catchers on the 40-man roster does seem a little bit weird and 
And since Fiducia is never going to be a starter for the Dodgers, if there was a trade partner who actually wanted Fiducia to be a starter or, you know, a, a straight up platoon, you know, the left-handed half of a catching platoon because he hits left-handed, uh, you know, I could see them working out a trade there for sure. Yeah. So again, uh, nothing to really factor in until we get more news. If the Dodgers are looking to do that, but an uh, interesting idea nonetheless, and we'll lend itself into another question slash idea that or more of a question, but from a listener, you guys are providing us with good content. We appreciate it. And we're going to talk about the free agents that the Dodgers didn't get. That might've not been so bad. So make sure to keep it locked on Dodgers. Today's episode is brought to you by Fan Duel. Super Bowl week is here and it's ready to, and it's time to celebrate with Fan Duel, America's number one sports book. And if you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite snacks, and placing some super bets. Uh, for me personally, not the best matchup or the matchup I want to see, especially in the stadium of the team that I root for, but. It can be better if I use FanDuel because right now new customers with FanDuel can bet on Super Bowl 58 and they can get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. There are so many things you can bet on in the Super Bowl. There's obviously who's going to win, who's going to lose, how many points will be scored, who will score a touchdown. Um, so you can get it deep into the props for heads and tails and all that type of stuff. All you going to do is place a $5 bet. If that $5 bet wins, you get an extra 200 on top of that. So if you want to enjoy the Super Bowl that way, you can do it that way. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. If you are not an everydayer, that is someone who listens or watches every day, all you have to do is start listening or watching every day. You can find us or you find podcasts and on YouTube. All you got to do is search for Locked On Dodgers. If you want to go beyond the podcast, you can do so at joinsubtext.com slash locked on Dodgers and become an insider. And the benefits you get from that is having a direct line to us you, for any questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, reactions to anything in the Dodgers world. A little bit slow right now, but it'll definitely ramp up as the season gets going and there'll be a lot to get into. So go become an insider today at joinsubtext.com slash locked on Dodgers. All right, Jeff, we had another question from a listener. I believe you had it pulled up of how – well, I'll just let you read it, then we'll get into it. You're on mute. Sorry, I forget how to use my mute button. Uh, this one comes from our buddy Brennan Holmes at B. Holmes Says. He says, looking back the last few years, who are the big free agents the Dodgers were linked to but were better off not signing? And uh, yeah, there's been plenty of them and, you know, for, for different reasons too. Anybody jump to your mind right away, Vince? I think we all have the same one that jumps to mind first. Uh, and this is all, I feel like it's one of those where regardless of everything that's happened, I think they all might fit this category now the, with the fact of what happened this offseason. But uh, there's definitely some that stand out more than others. And I think the first one is definitely Anthony Rendon. He didn't like the Hollywood lifestyle. And he doesn't seem to like the Anaheim lifestyle much either because he hasn't played much. Uh, again, it, it might have all been different had he come to the Dodgers. You know, maybe he would have stayed healthy. Maybe he would have, you know, been more motivated. Maybe he would have had a different last few years. Uh, but he's definitely the one that stands out the most uh, because it's big money. And, you know, they wouldn't have got Freddie Freeman for sure because Muncie probably would have stayed at first. And, you know, they maybe wouldn't with, – and with all the money tied up, they might have not thought about it. So I think that's the biggest one in sense of would have tied up money to prevent them from future things and hasn't worked out in the real world so far. Yeah, and that same offseason, there was another big one that uh, – I don't know if you remember this. Uh, we recorded an episode. I was in Washington, D.C. on vacation with my family, and we recorded an episode – and we did a little bit early because I was on the East Coast. And so it was later for me. And then you ended up, we just scrapped that episode we recorded because you had to record an all new one when Steven Strasburg re-signed with the Nationals instead of signing with the Dodgers. And uh, that was one that has been even better news than the Rendon one uh, because Strasburg, has he pitched at all? Like I, I think he's pitched like eight Damn. games 
since since signing that huge extension with the Nationals. And uh, I mean, his career is over now, and uh, it's just kind of kind of wild that he was one of the top free agents. And like, I'm looking at the MLB trade rumors site from that offseason. He was the number three free agent behind just Garrett Cole and Anthony Rendon. And he had Steven Strasburg. And that one has just been a disaster for him and a disaster for the Nationals. And uh, yeah, like we, we wanted him on the Dodgers. And uh, the Dodgers either got lucky or knew something we didn't know. Um, but it did seem like Strasburg is always going back to the Nats, and that ends up being a very good thing. Yeah, I mean, that, that, it's always a feeling of that 2019 Nationals team kind of, you know, sold their soul in a sense. Rendon was never the same. Strasburg was never the same. You know, Scherzer has been good in spurts, but hasn't quite been the same. It's, uh, they, you know, they traded Juan Soto. It's been a, a lot for them after that title. But, uh, but yeah, I think the next one for me, you know, there's a lot on this list that have been good players and that would have helped the Dodgers in the last few years. Who knows to what extent? But I think the guy that I have in mind, and again, these are always going to be reports, uh, and we don't know how deep some of these linkings are, but the Dodgers were linked to Madison Bumgarner at some point when he was a free agent, and uh, he didn't even make it through that contract with the Diamondbacks, and then the Diamondbacks actually ended up winning the World Series after getting rid of him last year. So I think you know that one on a few fronts we were already against anyways, uh, and the simple fact is that he wasn't good any at the time, really. He didn't get any better, and now, you know, he's not playing baseball anymore. Yeah, it's funny. All three of those are from the same offseason, and another one from that same offseason uh, that you might remember when they didn't get Rendon, there was talk that they might pivot to Josh Donaldson, and Donaldson was kind of the same boat. Like, he, he was good in 2020 in the shortened season, although his season was even shorter than everybody else's. He only played 28 games in the shortened season. And then he played 135 games the next year and was a solid hitter. Uh, and then he's been hurt and or bad ever since then. And uh, if the Dodgers were committed long-term to Josh Donaldson, like you said, they probably don't have Freddie Freeman because Max Muncy would be their first baseman. And, and, and maybe you, maybe they get, uh, you know, Muncie isn't necessarily an insurmountable hurdle if they decide they want Freeman, but the money they committed to Donaldson, maybe that would have been money going to Freeman. And so, uh, yeah, even just when you look at like sometimes the name Bryce Harper comes up in these conversations because if they'd gotten Bryce Harper, they wouldn't have got Mookie Betts. Obviously, Harper is very good. And, uh, you know, it's not any baseball reasons why you're glad they didn't sign Harper, although he has been hurt at times, uh, but just because. They did get Mookie Betts and they did win the World Series in that first year. Uh, but Donaldson is more of a, yeah, that just would have been uh, kind of a disaster that, and, and we wouldn't even necessarily realize it because, you know, if we're living in an alternate reality where they never signed Freddie Freeman, we wouldn't know that Freddie Freeman was ever even an option, you know? So that, that, that one off season had a lot of uh, dodged bullets, I think. Yeah. And you can go back to this past off season and the Dodgers weren't really linked to any of the shortstops, but, you know, you kind of look at the first year Bogarts had, the first year, uh, you know, Dansby was okay, but, you know, not not nothing groundbreaking. Correa, nothing groundbreaking. Uh, Trey Turner turned it on toward the end, but, you know, didn't really do it. Uh, but on that front with Trey Turner, you know, I think Max Scherzer is the other one of, of them not being able to sign him or not getting to sign him, him going to the Mets for that big, big, big money in terms of AAV. And the Mets didn't get the value they thought from him. They ended up trading him and going to the Rangers. And Scherzer did end up winning the World Series, uh, but not. It, it was uh, the joke of the kid that does nothing on the group project and gets an A. That was um, pretty much what Max Scherzer was. Uh, he did contribute innings, but uh, didn't really contribute much beyond that. Yeah. Um, you know, another one, you, you mentioned Correa and you and I were both on board with letting bygones be bygones and Santa Carlos Correa. He's been a free agent two years in a row. Uh, but the fact is when, uh, this last off season, when two different teams had concerns about his physical and backed out on him, uh, you know, it looks like, yeah, we don't know if his struggles in 2023 had to do with the reasons that he failed the physical, but the fact is, if he was hitting free agency right now, 
uh, it wouldn't be nearly as exciting because of last year. He, uh, he definitely took a step or two backwards and, you know, imagine if the Dodgers had signed him, put up with all the grief from fans and all the backlash. And then he sucked, you know, like it wouldn't have been ideal. I think there's two that we haven't mentioned and I, I, you know, they might not be the ones that got away, just be a different reality for the Dodgers. And I think it's Garrett Cole and Corey Seager. If they had Garrett Cole, you know, he just went to Cy Young this past season. They might not have signed Yamamoto, but they might, wouldn't really have needed Yamamoto. Technically, they would have had the ace already. They could have, you know, gone after somebody else in this free agency or in past free agencies. And then I think Corey Seager, as much as we all love, you know, love to think about what it could have been and seen him in the postseason last year and kind of dominating. I don't know necessarily if he changes much. They might, you know, win a series, win an extra game here or there, and maybe he does flip the tables a little bit. But uh, I just don't see him turning the Dodgers into World Series champions any of the last two seasons. Yeah, for me, the only argument against Seager is what it would have cost them as far as signing other players because the fact is they probably don't sign Freddie if they had re-signed Seager. And, uh, you know, even if, if for no other reason, they would have had to have a fist fight over the number five, which reminds me, we had the conversation about retired numbers. Imagine a world where Freddie goes into the Hall of Fame wearing a Braves cap but helps the Dodgers win a couple – World Series titles. Corey Seager goes into the Hall of Fame with the Dodgers cap. Uh yeah, and the Dodgers retired number five for both of them uh, at the same time, kind of like the the Cubs did with Greg Maddox and Fergie Jenkins, number 31. Uh that, that's something my buddy Andre brought up after we had that conversation about retired numbers that number five. And that's not even mentioning my favorite player growing up, Mike Marshall, who wore number five, or Nomar Garcia Parra, who wore number five. So you know, uh, so many options to retire number five. But, uh, yeah, I, I would love to have Seager at shortstop right now. Uh, but when you think about what they might not have if they did have Seager, it makes it a little bit uh, more of an iffy proposition. Yeah. So that was a fun little look back and also just one of those things, you know, every year. This offseason we've been spoiled, but it's possible down the line in a few years we might think differently if any of these deals don't end up working out. But, Hopefully in our end, they all do. And, uh, you know, the Dodgers made the right decisions and they lead some multiple championships in the next few years. All that pain and suffering was worth it. So Absolutely. that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for making Lockdown Dodgers your first listen of the day. You can find us wherever you find podcasts and on YouTube. We're here for you every Monday through Friday for about 30 minutes. And we're here for you in a variety of ways. One of those ways being a Lockdown Dodgers insider. You can do that at joinsubtext.com slash locked on Dodgers and you can text directly with us you can get answer we can answer your questions we can answer your thoughts we can have reactions we can do all that and then uh, once season starts I'll be having some stuff when I'm down there uh before the game so we can you can get a lot of stuff over there join subtext.com slash locked on Dodgers remember the lockdown podcast network has some 24 7 streaming channels the two that might be good for you are locked on sports today and locked on sports Los Angeles they're both available on YouTube streaming 24 7 so go subscribe to those you can find us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Locked On Dodgers. Jeff is on Twitter at Snide Dog. I'm at Vince since 91. You can DM either of us if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. You can also send those via email, lockdowndodgers at gmail.com or via voicemail text at 323-863-5625. We're here every weekday morning and we hope you'll be here with us when you get in your car or if you're at home. Terrace My Device Way Podcast, Locked On Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree, you just have to listen. Have a good one. We'll talk to you tomorrow.